is 329 BC. Italy. Warring city-states vie for power and superiority over their neighbors. The Senate and people of Rome control the Latin states, but enemies surround them. The Republic stands at a crossroads in history. Romans, senators, friends. Latium is firmly under the rule of the Senate and people of Rome. The Latin people are now one. Not since noble Brutus drove out the last king have we known such a glorious day. But now, my friends, in this hour of glory, we must be on our guard. To the south, treacherous Greeks and Samnites block our trade. Tarquinii groans beneath the tyrant's heel. That tyrant threatens Rome. Will we abandon Tarquinii? And now, barbarians raid from the north, burning and pillaging Roman lands. Shall we let danger fester and grow? Or will we act as Romans with courage and dignity? Remember, we are the sons of Mars! As Senate leader, I call upon tribunes Gaius Julius and Decius Brutus to smash the Gauls and relieve Tarquinii. All those in favor say I. I am Victoria, your advisor. I will be your guide through the world of Rome total war. Follow my instructions and you will learn everything. This is the area around Rome. Parts of the map you have not yet explored are shrouded in darkness. As you move your armies further afield, cities, armies and the lay of the land are revealed to you. This is Rome, the eternal city of the Seven Hills, home of the Senate and the people of Rome. At this stage there is no empire, just Rome, with the Senate ruling and a few great families such as yours vying for power. You play the Julii, one of Rome's great families. At this stage, this is your only army, and you own no cities. Your mission is to assist the Senate in extending the power of Rome. Later, much later, you may have ambitions to take control from the Senate and become emperor. An army of Gauls is approaching from the north, and the Senate have sent an army under Captain Decius to intercept them. He has requested your assistance. Normally, each faction makes its moves in turn, but I'll move your army for you to get us to the battle. Battle is about to commence. Get ready to defend Rome from the barbarian horde. Ave, General. I am Marcus, trusted centurion and military advisor to your family. I will watch your actions on the battlefield and show you how to command magnificent armies and crush your enemies for the glory of Rome. Now, let's take a look at the battlefield. As you enter a battlefield, your view starts by facing to the north with armies deploying according to the locations they occupied on the campaign map. Your army joined the battle from east of the river, so it starts here. The Senate army joined battle from the southwest of the bridge, so it starts here. The invading Gaul army started in the northwest, so it starts here. The Gauls are beginning an attack. Let's take a closer look at the action.
This is the acting commander of the Senate's legions, Captain Decius. He's a junior member of the Senate's faction. Units, march! Remember, the strength of a Roman army lies in its disciplined legions. They are the envy of the civilized world. Barbarian armies rely on brute force, strength of will, and an all-out charge to batter their enemies into submission. Once broken, they are easily crushed. The Senate has promised a reward to the soldiers who bring them the head of the Gaulish warlord, Dumnorix. It looks like neither army has summoned the will to engage just yet. Skirmishing could go on for a while. This is a good chance to show you how easy it is to command armies like these. This is your general, Gaius Julius. Your faction leader on the campaign map and commander in the field. He is the most important unit. His wisdom and courage give both strength and morale to the soldiers around him. Use him wisely and victory is certain. You can rotate your camera view by pushing your mouse cursor to the edge. That was the basics of camera movement. Tips for the future. To select your general's cavalry. When you're ready, while a selected unit is moving, you, can, you might want the camera to follow us. on the unit card indicator. You'll see that the camera pans directly to you. Our maneuvering has attracted the attention of the enemy cavalry and they're coming this way. Archers are vulnerable to cavalry. sending archers against us. Select your archers by left clicking on them or their unit card. Now, now select your general's cavalry unit. Barbarians. When 
They run away. Get ready to cross the bridge and attack. With multiple units, it can be a good idea to select them all at once when giving them orders. Units acting together can be more. The barbarians have noticed that we are moving to the bridge. Guard this end with your triarii. that river and kill the remaining enemy. When crossing a bridge in battle, it is best for units to cross as fast as they can. Troops can be vulnerable to enemy attack during a crossing. have started a full-scale attack. Hurry! Now that you're ready to attack the enemy, move your Triarii spearmen that when moving troops around on the battlefield, it is a good idea to walk them unless they are either mounted or close to the enemy. Another method of unit selection is to left-click on them. Now paused.
is slain, and now his men fear us. It is time to press the attack. Victory from her generals, and this day is clearly our victory! Victory! Now you've learnt the basics of the battlefield, I'm going to show you how to play on the campaign map. Battles last just a day, but building an empire takes time. On the campaign map, time is divided into turns, each lasting six months. If you look at your army, you will see that the Senate has rewarded you with some military units. These will go some way to helping you expand your power. You have also received a special payment to help pay for the campaign you have just fought. The controls on the campaign map are similar to the battlefield. Left-click selects things, and right-click moves them. If you want to look around the map, use the up down, left and right cursor keys, or just push your mouse cursor to the edges of the screen. Try it. Double-clicking on most things opens up a scroll with more details. The first time you see any scroll, I'll tell you what it's all about, but if you forget, you can always click on the question mark in the top right of a scroll. Sir. Don't do this now, as I have some more important things to tell you. It's time to get moving. Select the army indicated by using the left mouse button, and we'll move it. You have selected your army. You'll notice that as soon as you do this, the panel at the bottom of the screen fills with unit cards. Your general, Gaius Julius, gets a card of his own for him and his bodyguard. Use right-click to move all your units to the edge of the green. Remember, when moving your armies around the map... The panel at the bottom of the screen gives details on whatever you have selected and has buttons that bring up a variety of scrolls. You may also have noticed that when you hold the mouse pointer over things, a handy tooltip pops up telling you what it is. You can look at these later by yourself in more detail, but for now, I'll explain what each button does. This is your overview of the world. It allows you to see territories owned by factions you have contact with at a glance. It also shows your own territories. At present, there is little to show, but I am confident it will get busy later on. This displays your currently selected character or settlement. From here, you can cycle through all your characters, armies and settlements with the arrows to the side. Open an information scroll for a selected character or settlement by double left-clicking on the related item on the campaign map. Controlling a faction requires more than just a strong sword arm and a treasury full of cash. From here, you can examine the state of your faction, keep track of your heirs, and make policy decisions. If you open this scroll, you can use the tabs you will see at the top to examine information about the Senate, diplomacy, your financial status, and other faction information. This shows the current season and lets you know if you are going to be fighting in summer or winter. This is important. This is the end turn button. When you decide you have completed all your actions for a turn, you can click on this to advance the game. You have already moved your army, so now would be a good time to end the turn. It is now a new campaign turn. You will see that the money in your treasury is going down. In fact, you are borrowing from money lenders. This is because you are paying wages to your army but have no income. You will need to capture a settlement to give you an income. Money is essential to build settlements or troops. The circle button on the control panel is where you can see a summary of your empire's income and expenditure for the turn. At the moment, you have no empire, so there's not much to see there other than the ongoing expense of maintaining your army. From time to time, you will see a small picture slide down the left side of your screen. These are messages detailing important events that have occurred it is important to read them as and when they appear. You can left-click on a message to open it. Right-click will dismiss it. 
You might notice a button in the bottom left corner of these scrolls. This will focus your view on the subject of the message. The Senate mission to capture Taquinii gives you a chance to earn a reward from the Senate and to gain a settlement which will give you an income. It's the first step towards building an empire and should solve your money problem. To attack or siege a settlement, left click on the army you want. Engage the enemy! This scroll contains your options for besieging enemy settlements. Left click on Show Me How for further details. This scroll shows you the known details of an allied, neutral, or enemy character. the fire at will button for the first section of the enemy settlement's walls. Divert your heaviest troops to attack the breach. Without haste, the defenders will be ready and your advantage lost.
no mercy! The enemy walls are down! Make sure their soldiers are buried beneath the ruins! Click on graphic options to add or remove graphical effects and change the resolution of the campaign map and battlefield. Press the special unit abilities button for them. Clear away enemy missile infantry is a direct cavalry charge. However,
done well this day. The walls are taken. The spearmen are the best troops for defeating cavalrymen. Left click to show me how button to zoom to your unit. Enemy cavalry are readying an attack on the flanks. One of your units is under attack. General is dead! His men know their doom approaches! Once your men are in combat... Lower quality infantry are useful for...
Well done. You have freed the Taquinii from tyranny. The Senate of Rome has voted to allow full citizenship to the Taquinii. You must now develop this settlement and put business in order. This will take less time if you do not enslave or exterminate a settlement. Now would be a good time to learn how to control the development of your settlements. By selecting and constructing the correct buildings, you can attract more people to tax, create a bigger pool of recruits, and gain access to better units. Left click on the construction button. Manual construction. To keep this settlement safe and to support your troops. Manual recruitment can only take place when a governor is present in a settlement. If there is no permanent governor in place, you may wish to queue up units for training. Left click on a unit to add it to the recruit. This is the button you click for recruiting armies. No faction can survive without armies, and this is where you build them. You have constructed a shrine to Jupiter. This will help increase Taquinii's loyalty to Rome. Make sure you upgrade your barracks in order to allow recruitment of units. This will allow you to move existing troops out of Taquinii and onto more important duties. Left click on my portrait in the scroll. This scroll gives you all the important details.